Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everybody in between, welcome to another episode of the Chaps Chat Cats. My name is Jake, and I'm joined in the virtual studio by Sambo and Johnny, a full complement of chaps. How are you? Good. Good, good. Doing well. Yourself? Very good. It's nice to... I'm good. Thanks, John, for asking. Yeah, no, I'm good. Uh, had a good day so far. Fun to be able to get into the recap pod uh, so early. Obviously, it, it hamstrings us a bit. Uh, preview pod, rather. It'd be very early to get into the recap pod. Um, <laughs> what a good win that was. Pod, <laughs> it was a tremendous win over the Pies. Um, on to the top four we go. Uh, that is what we're going to be talking about tonight, is the preview. Cats v Magpies round 18 preview um, from the MCG, obviously, traveling up to the G to play the Pies. Interesting matchup. I think ladder positions don't count for much at the minute. You know, it looks like, you know, fifth v ninth or whatever. It doesn't really matter when there's only, you know, a game and a half between ninth and the top four or whatever or 12th in the top four it's it's all a bit of a log jam at the moment so there'll be lots to get into there and then for the extended patreon part of the show we're going to jump into our patreon match predictions so you know what to do if you like this show and you're like oh i'd like you know 20 to 30 minutes extra um or i'd like to get wednesday news wraps with jake and ben or maybe i'd like to hear the scratching post mini pods from Paul, or the VFL men's and women's coverage, well, then you know to head on over to the Hoops Crew Patreon, start your seven-day free trial, check it out. We'd love to see you over there. We want to hit that 30 Patreon subscriber mark before the end of the men's season. Help us do it. If you love what we do, we'd love to see you over there. Um, That is the Hoops Crew Patreon. Um, And of course, chaps, we ran the quiz last week. Uh, to determine how much of the sponsor reads you've been taking in. I won't quiz you this week. I'll just do the, uh, I'll do, we'll just do it. We'll just talk about them. Um, they are Valhalla Brewing. They are the media network sponsor of the Hoops Crew. They have the brew hall set up in North Geelong. So if you find yourself in North Geelong, you're looking for a, a cool beverage um, to warm the cockles of your heart on a winter's day. Go on over to Valhalla Brewing, the brew hall in North Geelong. And if you're down in the CBD, get along to the tap room. Go along. Visit Valhalla Brewing. Do us a favor and support the people who support us. That is Valhalla Brewing the media network sponsor of the Hoops Crew. But, chaps, that's all of the business parts of the show taken care of. We can get into it now. The preview, can the Cats solidify their top four push when they go up against the Collingwood Magpies this Friday night at the MCG? Johnny, I'll go to you first. How are you feeling coming into this clash against the Pies who – while perhaps a little bit up and down in terms of their form, uh, they're never far out of the fight and um, probably present as a pretty dangerous opposition still. Oh, I've got you. Definitely. I've caught you taking a drink. <laughs> Definitely. I thought I would get a quick drinking to moisten the lips. <laughs> I just timed it at the wrong okay. time. Um, That's yeah, right. coming up against the magpies is, you know, you never know what you're going to get. With the pies, it's generally it's a pretty tight, tough game. But you know, the recent form hasn't been fantastic just yet. So you know, there could be continual on that form where it's not the best. But also, I could come out going, "We need a big win. This is a big game for both teams." So they could be up for it. So it's going to be an interesting, tough game. A little bit nervous, but I could also see us getting on top of the pies and having a nice win, but can also see it being a real arm wrestle. And I, I think it could be an arm wrestle. As I said, the pies are getting to that point where they'd like to get a win soon and a big one. 
and you know cats magpies have had some big games in the past and they're always been pretty close and tight so yeah i'm i'm excited a little bit nervous but also that on that little bit of the side of here i think we can get a pretty good win here tonight um on friday night so depends what the team selections are as well because i know the pies have got a lot of a lot of injuries and if they get you know some of the bigger names back that could be make it a bit more interesting but overall nervous but also excited and a little bit of a little bit confident that the cats have got the goods and our form has been really good and continuing on from good win against Essendon, good win against Hawthorne, the scum. We can continue on this really good form where Cameron's up, Stewart's up. Um, Dangerfield's playing at his best in, and being really influential. Max Holmes is looking really damaging off the halfback. And, you know, Shannon Neal has stepped up nicely. So I think it's another good test. I feel like these games are coming at the right time for the Cats. It's a really good test to see where they are at. And this is just another mm. really promising test for this team. Yeah, absolutely. It, we talked about it a few weeks ago that it was a pretty, uh, you know, a bit of a pivotal four weeks, probably. I mean, North, we need to back ourselves to win that one. But three of the four, um, you know, Bombers, Hawks, Pies, and the Bulldogs to come, you know, in this four game stretch and then we get north um it it can these results i suppose can define whether you go top eight or top four we know how important top four is in terms of getting the double chance finishing outside the top four doesn't mean you you know you can't win the flag but it certainly means that you would be among a, a small minority of teams to have won it from outside the top four so big tests um Sambo, the Pies beat us both times last season. Beat us 125 to 103 in round one. They beat us 109 to 101 in round 22. Despite being, you know, not at our best in 2023, we certainly gave them a red hot crack uh, in a year that they won the flag. Where are you at? Do you have anything to add to sort of what Johnny was saying or feelings about going into this game? Uh, no, I'm pretty pretty on the same page as Johnny. I'm probably slightly more nervous than I was against against Hawthorne. Like I know Hawthorne were up and about uh, on a good on a good tear, but just just my general gut feeling about that game was that there was there was no um, you know no need for panic or anything like that. Like I I just felt like unless we if we played our way, I think we were always going to win that game. Um, and like John said, Collingwood just feels a little bit more unpredictable at the moment. Like I think we'd seen Hawthorne playing at their absolute peak for several weeks prior to us playing them. And that, although they look very good, it did make me feel somewhat confident to know what to expect. But, you know, Collingwood have looked pretty ordinary at times this year. But like I was saying to you earlier, John, you know their best isn't that far away. And like you said, it's just like the cats last year where you go, yeah, we had some really bad performances some really bad stretches, but it's only a matter of months to go back and look at this, at us being the most dominant team in the competition. So it wouldn't, you presumably wouldn't take much to get back there. And you, you'd have to, you'd have to, I think you have to give that to the pies and say that they're the same. It's only the right, the right personnel coming back, um, you know, getting their mentality, right. A bit of a shift in there in their focus and, and things could kind of click back together. So I am expecting a cat's win um, because I always do, but I probably, yeah, probably a little bit warier, probably got my, got my heckles up a little bit about a bit of an unknown pies team coming in. Um, and it looks like Jamie Elliott's coming back. Uh, he hasn't played for a while. And um, I, I do know that he's had some, he's had some good, outings against the cats i feel like they've got a lot of players that you know get around the 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 headlines and whatnot but i feel like elliot's the one that has often been the, that guy to kick that last goal against us that makes you go ah oh, damn <laughs> it's probably out of reach now like I, just, I feel like he's always the one that kicked the has kicked settler goals against us goals to just put the margin beyond gettable in the in the last minutes or you know um sort of momentum shifting goals so obviously he's coming back from injury and you don't know what he's gonna where he's gonna be at but um 
he is a player that does does bother me sometimes. So yeah, I, I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little. Um, yeah, I've got some nerves creeping in already, and it's not even game day, which is unusual. Normally they don't creep in until we sit down to watch. Um, but you know, I'm really happy with with where the cats are at, and I think, you know, if all if all goes right. The Pies might bring their best football, but as long as we can also bring our best, I think we should get the win. Yeah. No, I agree with both of you chaps there. And um, yeah, the Pies are an interesting kettle of fish. You sort of Mm. flash back. They started the season 0-3, lost to the Giants, got pretty much, you know, very comfortably beaten by Sydney, beaten by St. Kilda. And we're thinking, wow, like this is a real, real bit of a hangover. Then they got a 20 point win against the Lions, they just got over the line against the Hawks, 77 to 72. They pumped Port Adelaide 123 to 81. Then it's been kind of interesting. A draw with Essendon, uh, a six-point win over Carlton. They flogged West Coast by about 70 points. A four-point win over the Crows, a draw with Frio, an 18-point loss to the Dogs, a seven-point win over the Ds, a one-point win over North Melbourne. And then the 11-point loss to the Gold Coast and the two-goal loss to the uh, the Bombers. So it's been a very weird season. It does remind me a little bit of, like you chaps have been saying, the Cats in 2023 where sometimes you'd see moments of their best footy or games or you'd see it for a few weeks and then injury or just, you know, that just too many bad quarters would put them too far behind the eight ball. but. Geez, they watched that Gold Coast game in the extended highlights, and I I thought they were, you know, going to run over the top of the Suns, um, just like they had done to North the previous week. So I think mm. the best stuff's still there. Um, let's talk about some sort of some team selection stuff. Obviously, we don't have the teams. We're recording this just before four o'clock on Thursday, so teams are still a few hours away from being announced, but. Um, We'll start with the Pies, just on those injuries you chaps talk about. Available this week, Darcy Cameron um, is going to be available to play. This is according to the Pies website. And Jeremy Howe, Jeremy Howe, obviously a very important weapon for them down back. To be assessed will be Jamie Elliott and uh, Oleg Markov, John Noble and Isaac Quainor. And then the other updates are obviously for players that won't be playing for them. Aiden Bug, Josh Carmichael, Mason Cox, Josh Eyre, Bo McCreary and Dan McStay and Brody Myacek all sort of stand out for me uh, in terms of absences. I think McCreary is a really important player for them, the way he pressures and chases. And Myacek kicked five goals against us the last time out. Tom Mitchell also still out, as well as Will Parker, Jacob Ryan, Oscar Steen. I think yeah, for me, McCreary and Myacek. Um, well, McCreary and McStay, actually, probably the big ones for me because I, I sort of see if Jamie Elliott comes back in, that covers a bit of that loss of um, Brody Myacek. That, that's mm. sort of that smaller, well, you know, medium kind of forward um, who seems to always be able to, you know, kick a pesky four or five goals against us. But I I, I think that I feel good as a Cats supporter, I guess, about some of those outs. But the, the outs that – sorry, rather the ins that we should really focus on, and it's it's one thing to say they're missing all these players, you know, you know they're not going to – like they're Dacos brothers. They're not going to be missing Jordan Degoe. Um, Like those players are still there. And I, I feel like while that midfield group, are there, they're going to be really dangerous. Um, I don't know if you Caps have any real thoughts on the Pies outs more than what you've already said or you want me to move on to the Cats injury news? Uh, yeah, no, I, look, I don't know enough about any other team to really, <laughs> really comment on much. <laughs> I know I know particular players that I don't like playing against, but uh, yeah, no, like I don't, I don't think, I think, it's an issue to get too sucked into hoping this player doesn't play or that player, you yeah. know, does play or that player has a, has a good game. You got to focus on the cats on and the, uh, you know, the kind of football they want to play. No, I, I agree. I don't know much. About so let's talk. And... 
don't really care. They can have the best players in and uh, we'll still play and play our best against them. Yeah. Um, I guess that the one where they could really have been um, hamstrung, I think, would have been if Darcy Cameron didn't get up because you've got Mason Cox out. Mm. The fact they've got Darcy Cameron, you know, who, you know, their other ruck in, um, that's, that's, I think, good news. If I was a Pies supporter, I'd be pretty happy about that. Um, all right, let's talk Cats injury news. And this one really, I suppose, in some ways doesn't necessarily pertain to anyone who's going to be selected this week. Like we got out of the game against Hawthorne per the injury update from the Cats a couple of days ago with none of, the selected lineup suffering any injury that made the team news. Um, the ones that are on there are Mitch Edwards and Emerson Jecker, who are both back and Achilles, respectively. They are a test to play, presumably, this weekend in the VFL. Then you've got Tanner Bruin still out with that scaphoid injury one to two weeks. Ollie Wiltshire with a pelvis injury two to three weeks. Tom Hawkins still out four to six weeks with his foot injury. Then you've got TBCs on Cam Guthrie with his Achilles and Conway with the foot. The Conway thing kind of disturbs me a little bit, chaps, just because they're still like, we're still investigating what it is. It's like sort of, I don't know. <laughs> it feels like it's been going on a couple of weeks now. Like how, what's, what's the issue? Like what, what specifically, if we get, what is the investigation? What is this mystery around Toby Conway's foot sort of, um, leaving me a little bit concerned about his his availability the rest of the season. But um, do you think there'll be much change this week in this lineup? Like Stanley, no. Parfit, uh, who else comes to mind? Oshin Mullen, they're players that all played VFL. I guess Mitch Nevitt didn't play this week. Um, Due to illness, though, it sounds like maybe he won't play this week either. That was just sort of rumor mill stuff that I'd heard. But, yeah, do you think Stanley Parfit or O'Shane Mullen will come back into this side or will be largely unchanged? I've got a feeling it could be largely unchanged unless I want to switch things up a bit with the bringing a Ruckman or, as we discussed earlier, a bit of a tagging role against the Dacos guys. but. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if cats go in, cha- in unchanged, as you know it's it's been working well. Unless they think Lawson Humphreys needs a bit of a bit of a break from a couple of games, and you know it's, you tend to see that a lot. A young guy comes in, plays one to two games, has a bit of a break, and then you know he comes back in a few weeks later. So yeah, as you said, not many injuries, not many. Um, performance concerns from any any of the players either. So, I think whoever gets dropped will be will be on the rough end of the stick. So it'd be interesting to see what happens. Um, yeah, I think going in cha- unchanged would be a good thing. But also, if they think they do need to tag someone, I think they will definitely bring in either Mullen or O'Connor. But apart from that, it's hard to say who comes out and who replaces who. Yeah. Is, are you happy, Sambo, like if they decide to roll on with Lawson Humphreys and another one I would just uh, – another two that I'd ask about, Jai Clark, would you be happy to see him just keep rolling on in the side? Sean Manor, Shannon Neal, you happy with sort of if they all front up again this week? Yeah, I, I think so. From a purely subjective point of view, like I always have this – tinge of wanting to see Parfit back in the side. I, you know, I, I like Parfit. I've always liked Parfit from a just mm. from just a, a, a preferential point of view. I'd love to see him get a get another go, but I haven't been watching the VFL. Um, you know, I don't really know what he's turning out if he's if he's doing enough to get himself back in the side. So that's purely just from a you know, a trading card kind of perspective of <laughs> like the players I like to see out there. Um mm. so but yeah apart from that I'm um, I, uh, I'm pretty happy to keep it rolling on as is. I wouldn't be surprised if they find a way to have Ollie Henry in the starting lineup, even if that means Gary Rowan is the sub. Um, 
uh, it's not my preference, but just there's some things Chris Scott said in a couple of his presses that make me think that they will try to, like the fact that Henry was the sub last week, he more or less said that he regretted not getting out there a little bit earlier. Um, but his, um, it was more or less just to not throw him back out there for a full game um, and to give him a bit of e- an easing out. But he specifically said he's, that that's not to, like, no one should look at that as us viewing him as not being in our best forward line because he is. And that made me go, it could just be Chris Scott sort of, you know, saying stuff as he does. But yeah, I suspect they're going to try, they might may try to get Ollie Henry into the into the, the starting forward line. As we always say, we trust their decision-making and all that sort of stuff. They've got the track record of getting it right. But from like, if I'm in the coach's seat sort of thing and like just knowing what I, the limited things I know as, as on, on the couch, I guess, um, don't like Gary Rowan is in such good form. Don't mm. drop him. Like, I don't know, and someone else. Plays well play. against Collingwood as well. Yeah, there is there is an aspect of the, of that too. Like it's his, it's his you know, old club. There's a bit of theatre to it, but I don't reckon, think um, you, I don't think Ollie. I mean, I have stood them next to each other. <laughs> I don't know the stats, but I don't think you're dropping Neil and putting Ollie Henry say, in without you, Hawk, without Hawkins in the side. Mm. Yeah. So I look at it and I go, well, they're not dropping any of the smalls. And they're not going. They're not no. dropping. They're not putting pushing Cameron out. Uh, no. <laughs> and I think. I think. I think. Like, like, yeah. I just. I wouldn't be surprised if they're if they're keen to get Ollie Henry back in there. Um, and you know, I don't think they're too sentimental about it. And Gary Rowan is a an absolute clubman and a team player, and he has been the sub for several weeks. I think he's done enough. I think what he does is vital. I would say that the only thing that Ollie Henry has done at his peak. I don't think we've seen it this year, but the thing that Ollie Henry has done at his peak that Gary Rowan hasn't necessarily necessarily done is consistently turn in a few more goals. Right? So, you know, it's much more likely Ollie Henry's going to kick three or four than Gary Rowan, yeah. I would say. Gary Rowan pretty like he's pretty consistent at giving you two. <laughs> um, two and a, and a few really good highlights up, up outside of that, but you know, without Hawkins in the side, without Hawkins and without Hawkins in form too, I think having a player like Ollie Henry in there that might just pinch three, four um, on a pretty consistent basis um, if you're trying to outscore Collingwood. Yeah. I, I, Gary Rowan's my favorite player. I don't want him to be dropped, but I, yeah. I think there's, I think there is a world where they do that for sure. Yeah. I just looked up the height differences and stuff. Like Shannon Neal is 203 centimetres. Ollie Henry's 189. Yeah. He and Gary Rowan, I think, are much more like for like. Um, yeah, I know, I know it's sort of a basic sort of take, but I think it's it's an obvious one. Um, but, you know, Shannon Neal is auditioning for the Hawkins role, essentially. Yeah. The big, you know, strong, full forward. Um, he's not got the... The, the diversity to his game that Cameron has, um, you know, the the beauty of Jeremy Cameron is he can roll down the wing, he can roll onto a stoppage, he can play up forward, he can mark and lead and crumb, and he can kind of do everything. Um, so yeah, no, I, I'm I'm I hear ya. I, I think there is a world where they could do that. Um, and you know, I liked Ollie Henry as well. You know, when he was up and about for us uh, too, and he was up and about earlier in the season, in fact, but. I don't know. I just love Rowan's presence, particularly in these big games when you need someone um, to set a tone. Um, I'll be interested to see with Sean Manor too. Just I reckon, you know, I reckon he's done enough to surely he's done enough to hold his spot at the moment. Fourteen tackles, yeah. Good setups. It'll be interesting to see, like when be. as other players get healthier and stuff. Like if Mitch Nevitt is healthy, um, you know, did he get into the side because? Nevitt was out. Was that the swap? Was it was it Manor in for Nevitt sort of thing? Very different players, but um, yeah, fascinating to find out. Let's talk about what we want to see. Um, Sambo, handball to you first, then John, and then I'll close us out. What do you want to see, Sam? 
Um, I would like to see Tom Stewart have another really good game. Like, there's a few things. There's a few things I go. I feel like I always look for the same things. There's a few things like with the off-ball structure and the defensive structure, and um, you know, really pressing them up in their in their back line. But I think I think specifically, I'm really starting to get invested in this Tom Stewart midfield adventure. Um, yeah. I'm. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really liking that that narrative, and I hope that, um, you know, the the certain talking heads in the media have been like basically barracking for other teams and pleading with other teams to tag Tom Stewart even when he's in the middle. It's a bit strange to me. I don't know why they're so keen for other teams to beat Geelong. Uh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> like, like very very strange to basically be telling other teams what tactics they should be doing. Um. But yeah, regardless of if he is tagged or not, um, I really hope Tom, Tom Stewart has his best outing yet in the midfield. Uh, I just, I, yeah, against the That'd Pies, I'd love to see him just absolutely wreck house. Love it. <clears throat> Johnny? Uh, I want to see Jamie Cameron kick s- straight goals and no behinds this week. <laughs> <laughs> Could have had eight last week. Um, i and I reckon he can easily do it. I was listening to the the Cats podcast and Shannon Burns was on there and said he got new boots. And he was showing off the new boots, his new Blue Row boots. And missed the first three set shots. Burns said he went out there and just said, you know, how's the new boots going? They're working for you. Cameron replied, yep, I've just got them sighted in. Next, next goal I'll get. And he kicked the next four straight. So... I reckon he's in. No, I think he's ready to kick whatever strike this game, and so that's what I want to see. Love it. Um, I want to see how our young stars stand up in the most hostile environment they'll have faced this season. I don't think we've yet played in a game in front of a crowd that'll be quite like Friday night at the G. I know, like, we, we talk a lot about the Cats-Hawks rivalry, and there's, a, I think, a lot more venom and hatred to it. For me, Collingwood-Cats is a little bit in the same neighborhood as Cats-Swans, in that the Pies have kind of been up and around it a fair bit during the last 15, 20 years. Like, there's a lot of big clashes between the Cats and the Pies. We've had the better of them in finals, five and two against the Pies in finals in the 21st century. Um, but it's there's been some epic clashes. I think it's always a good testing sort of moment of where you're at. I think back to 2007, and I remember the Cats and Pies played in like round nine maybe, and the Cats had just got on their winning streak. And I was thinking, how are we going to go against the Pies? I feel like we'd had some recent history of losing to them. And we went out on the MCG and we beat them by about 20 points on a Saturday afternoon game. And I felt pretty good. That felt like a good tick in the box for us that we went to that environment and beat them. So I want to see how our young guys, Shannon Neal, Jai Clark, Lawson Humphreys, Ollie Dempsey, how those guys stand up and, and, and sort of respond to that environment. Because I think it'll be big. I think it'll be loud. And it's a good testing ground for maybe stuff that we'll have to endure in a couple of months' time um, with any luck. So, yeah, that's what I'll be wanting to see. Just it's more of a question mark. How do they they go? All right, that is the end of the public part of the show. We're going to duck now behind the Patreon curtain and do our Patreon match predictions. Um, So if you want to get that part of the show, sign up to the Hoops Crew free trial. See if you like it. Test it out. No harm, no foul. Uh, but as always, we're going to end the public show by playing our favorite musical guest, and that is the Halftime Horse. So thanks so much for listening, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Make sure you check out all the other stuff on the Hoops Crew Media Network. Uh, until next time, go Cats. Go Cats. Go Cats. Get your cordials, get your lollies, uh, 
a spray it's from the coach. Lollies, yeah. that's cordial. the weekly spray. So you get your cordial, you get your, yeah. your lollies. Uh, a spray from the coach. It's lollies, that's the weekly spray. That's what half times yeah. about.